Hey, what's going on? I want to welcome everybody to another episode of DDTV. And this is your host, Dylan Drickett. It is with a, I guess, unfortunate heart that I made this episode. Please pardon the pauses. I'm smoking right now. Um... I wanted to talk about a problem in the art community that has apparently been going on under the radar for quite some time now. And by quite some time, I do mean a long couple of years. I want to start with the lesser known of the topic, the lesser known subject of the topic. Recently, two artists were outed for a, just outed for sexual deviancy and behaviors and predatory patterns. And yeah, I just didn't know that was really a thing in our community. Of course, not to say I thought it didn't exist, but this is like one of the, this is probably the most public artistic or art community um, scandal that I have heard of, personally anyway, um, that... Yeah, this is just the biggest and most open one that has happened so far. For me, anyway, inside the art community. I've never seen a scandal like this in the art community. Yeah, and while I say... While I say that I didn't know it was possible, I mean, like I said, I just... Of course, it's not like I didn't think it was possible, it's just that... I mean, this shit is actually happening, and I and I, and to the victims, to the victims of these situations, my heart really goes out to you, because it's unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. To start off with the first person in the scandal, I'm gonna point to a, a artist named Mr. Ode. That's Mr. M I S T E R Ode O D E. Now, I don't really have too much about this guy, so I'm going to keep it brief. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go to his Instagram so I can have a better... What's the word? A better, I guess, take on the situation. So I'm going through his feed and no funny it's just it's just all women like right now i see a thumbnail for a lady holding a banana with her tongue out to her yeah it looks real sexualized like she's ready to just you know eat the banana which i mean if that's your art right nothing wrong with that a bunch of women a bunch of chicks inherently you would think there's nothing wrong with this but A closer examination, you'll see his art is a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, kind of barely dressed women. It's, uh, mostly in bikinis and you could say summer spring wear, but, you know, a lot of them have cheeks and, and, and cleavage exposed, which again, you know, if that's your thing, I mean, that's your thing, but. Why it's a problem is because this guy's an actual creep. This guy's an actual creep. And to follow up on that, I'm going to go to a artist who is actually pretty renowned in the art community. Um, her name is Cyber Love, and that's love with a zero. So. 
apparently over the years Mr. Ode has harassed women and solicited unnecessary pictures and enacted behaviors towards them and cyber love I I see seems to be the first person who has outed him publicly to which other people rallied behind her and rightfully so he's again beyond the work he's kind of a just a liar so I'm gonna read this post from cyber love it says to all my supporters to all my supports and followers please unfollow Marcus Prime and Mr. Ode these are black artists who appealingly show love to and of black women and femmes but coerce them into sexual favors under the disguise of art inspiration and DMs This is pretty much the crux of the whole episode. It's artists using their art to gain sexual favors. And it's... It's just terrible. So you go to the next slide. Mr. Ode seems to have sent... He screenshotted a picture of Cyber Love... He didn't even send the, the, the post to her. He screenshotted it. Sends her the screenshot and says, you have more outfits, ones that show figures like this, etc. And he just has, she has more slides, basically. This is cyber love, love with a zero. She has more slides of her interaction with Ode, and it just kind of shows this. It shows this weird, just a fucking weirdo, man. Like, let me tell you guys something. I've been called weird in my life, but at this point, I'll say there's two kinds of weird. There's weird people, and then there's weirdos. Now, guess which one Mr. Ode is? Yeah, he's a fucking weirdo. He's... He's like... He's like... What's the word? He's, 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 he's just trying to get words in to basically get what he wants out of her. Like, bro, we have the internet. You can just go on the internet and, and find any reference you're looking for, you know? go on Pinterest, whatever the fuck, but you're directly messaging women asking for, you know, and and, 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 and that's not even the worst part. Because if you, if you see somebody that you've been following and you want to draw them, but you kind of want to make it personal and ask them for a reference outside of their Instagram post, you know, I don't, I don't really see nothing wrong with that. You know, as long as both parties are consenting to the conditions that the other is asking for. But, you know, in these messages, you can see that she's kind of being standoffish about sending content of herself. Because why the fuck do you want that? He also goes on to, let me see here. He says, here's something he says. He says, wasn't sure if you wanted me to send the other drawing. I didn't like it, but found it in an old sketchbook. He he just, yeah, he just basically kind of went on in this whole exchange to try and garner whatever ulterior motives he had. And again, cyber love isn't the only person. I'm going to read the caption now. She says, don't support these artists. The screenshots are of Mr. Ode wanting to draw me, but asking for pictures in a more fitted clothes and different poses. He even asked for nudes. And I remember because I asked, why can't he just use his imagination? I sent him the picture of me in cat ears, which he did a quick sketch of and didn't show me until I started ignoring him. He contacted me again in September of last year under fake praise similar to how Marcus we're going to get to him similar to how Marcus would speak to me and then ask for more pictures 
Hashtag cancel Mr. Ode. You know, it's just fucking weak that there are a handful of shitty guys just giving guys a bad name in general. Because the artists I know don't do this. We don't go in the DMs of our followers and females and, 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 and I don't mean to say females, I'm sorry if that's that sounded condescending, but you know, the opposite gender. We just don't hop in DMs and just start asking for unnecessary things. Personal things. And to take things like that so lightly, you do deserve everything that you're getting right now. I'm going to go through the comment section on... um, Cyber Love's post. Let's see here. Somebody said that shit is just creepy. People talk like that in DMs. And Cyber Love responds, I don't see how. It's surprising that people do. Yeah, it is. It's it's totally out of line. I I don't know. Human decency is at a it's at a all all time low, you know? It's at an all-time high, too, ironically, but we have some of the lowest-acting human beings right now in history as well. Um, This commenter's name is Nye.Dala. I'm going to read her comment. She says, Yeah, I had an encounter with Mr. Ode before years ago, and he wanted to draw me. So I told him, go look on my IG page, because there's plenty of selfies up there, including my art. Nah. This Negro, she, she, she spelt it K-N-E-E dash grow, like G-R-O-W. This Negro kept pressuring me to send him, in his words, an exclusive picture, a.k.a. a nude. I never did it because my art family was in a beef with him at the time. And plus that shit made me uncomfortable as all hell. Then he had the nerve to say you'll never prosper as an artist. Looking the way you do because of my figure. Nigga got mad that I didn't send him naked pictures, so he went the low road of a child with her feelings and called me fat. Childish. I'm glad they're getting this pressure. Cyber love responds, literally how they act and is gross. They come to you like that, and when we decline, start degrading us by our features and body. That's so fucking... That's another thing I don't understand. You know, guys, you know, if you holler at a girl... And she not fucking with you. I mean, just leave it at that. Why you gotta, why you gotta rag on her, man? Like if you, if you talk to her in the first place, I'm sure you thought she was something. So now she don't want to talk to you. She's, what is she fat? She's she's a bitch. What is she's all like? Come on, man. And 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 let me let me go back on this guy's page, Mister O. You, you you go on this page. 142,000 followers and it's just these kind of people that really don't deserve the spotlight that they're getting he is now though he's getting the spotlight he deserves so I'm happy about that but honestly yeah, people like this work their way to the top doing harmful and egregious things to other people and they get to a point of fame that these people cannot really the people that they victimize they can't really speak out because their credibility is now being weighted against the fandom of that person that they're trying to make a claim against. So when I saw Cyber Love, um, I used to follow Cyber Love, by the way, I love her art, but I think I just noticed that I didn't get a follow back. So I just like unfollowed because like I know her name. So I always just like check out her art and stuff. But yeah, you know, if you 
some people I like to have on my feed mutually, you know? And if you're big enough, then it doesn't even matter to, like, follow you. But... Yeah, man. Um, I, I'm... I mean, there's another pose. Mr. Ode says, I've never asked for sexual favors trying to make me look bad. Man. Let me see this. Sorry, I'm reading the uh, comment section. Yeah, Mr. Ode is such a piece of trash. And I remember going on his page and reading his apology. Oh, he put a... Oh, my gosh. And then these people... He's limited the comments on his posts. So he's not really trying to take accountability. He just kind of pulled up an apology post. I'm not even going to really read it. You can go look at it if you want, but... He had put up something on his stories, which I'm going to kind of segue into Marcus Prime. He put up something in his series kind of apologizing for his behaviors, to which he said he's probably going to seek therapy. And I just thought it was real fucking comical because that was in Marcus Prime's apology. You read Marcus Prime's apology and and then towards the end... I believe he... I'm going to read his apology because it's, it's shorter. I mean, Mr. Oods isn't too long, but I don't know. The format's just... His does feel longer. So if you have to say so much about how you fucked up, it says a lot about you already. I don't care to read that. But yeah, he's like, oh, I might need therapy, seek therapy or whatever. And it's like, yo, you know you're a piece of shit. And only reason you even gonna put up something like that I don't know if it's cause you saw what Marcus Prime put up as his apology or you you basically I just I just feel like that's a cop out like that's the thing to say now for some PR shit like yeah I'm gonna go seek therapy cause yo I'm just a piece of shit and I didn't really understand what I was doing at the time and where these impulses came from like no bro you you were simping with your art you got big headed and you let all this cloud get to your head and you started treating people like shit because it's not just females who had shitty interactions with you it was your whole it was this it was uh, i said females again pardon me again i'm sorry if like y'all not cool with that it's just it's just a thing but yo if you if 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 you having problems with all genders, like are you just getting hate from all sides, you, that that says something about you. Like I said, it's not just the women that were mad at him. It was also, yeah, I, I read the girl's comment earlier. I had art family that had beef with him, and it was like he was just on some. He was just off one, and it it really shows how off he was. So. Yeah, hashtag cancel Mr. Ode. Um, not really too big on that guy. Never was. I mean, he can draw, but I don't care if you can paint masterpieces. Like, you know, if you're a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. Which uh, brings me to the next guy, Marcus Prime. So, this is uh, probably where the bulk of the episode it's gonna really go i'm already kind of almost 20 minutes in but i didn't even really want to give mr o that much time but it, it's not just about mr o it's it's about other pieces of shit doing this kind of thing and whether they're famous or not that shit need to stop like cut that shit out uh let me let me let me see here i'm gonna I'm going to go on, uh, see if I can pull him up on Wiki or something. Marcus Prime. 
Because the thing is, the difference between Marcus Prime and Mr. Old is that Marcus Prime, you know, really contributed to the culture. And, or, you know, the, 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 the positivity of his fan base. Mr. O just always seemed toxic to me, so he, he, you know, I'm not even gonna discuss any redemption for that guy. And not even gonna say I'm talking about redemption for Marcus Prime either. Uh, I guess I'm gonna talk about what happened or just mention his side in this too because yeah, he's really at the forefront of this. It's Marcus Prime and then Mr. Oud. Because people just know Marcus Prime more. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Head Nerds in Charge. I found this article on their page. You can check them out. Straight like that. Head Nerds in Charge. And let's see here. Let me see if I can pull it up. I saw a link for, I guess they did a, yeah, so they have a post on Marcus Prime's um, harassment on women. And here's another one. Um, this one is more closer to home because I I know the guy. Um, and like, we may not be the best of friends. I mean, definitely not going to be now. But, like, I knew the guy. Or I thought I did, right? A lot of us thought we did. All right, so I'm on Head Nerds in Charge, and I'm going to read this. IG artist and creator of the Oh Nah comic strip, Marcus F.M. Prime, put on blast for harassing women and sending dick pics unsolicited. In this post, Marcus Prime has a shirt on. It's a black shirt, and it says, you would not believe what it says. It says, end rape culture. I I cannot believe my eyes. Whoa, this shit is crazy. Now, let me just say something. I originally thought Marcus Prime was from Brooklyn. Um... But I found out he was from... He's, he's actually from Ohio, so... Pretty happy about that because, you know... Spreading love is the Brooklyn way. And Marcus Prime was definitely not doing that, so... He's clearly not from Brooklyn. <laughs> and I know people might be like, yeah, but what about 6 9 We're not going to talk about that. That's what we're not going to do. That's not... He's, he's not... We don't we don't count that as Brooklyn. But anyways, yeah, Marcus Prime. He was born in Ohio and he apparently traveled around a lot. His uh I guess his parents were military. I wanna say his dad was. Uh I could be mistaken, it could be his mom, I'm not sure. Definitely feel like it was his dad though, but Regardless, they moved around a lot. And you hear it in some of his interviews, um, his inspirations uh, for his art and uh, how he, you know, came to the content that he basically got popular for. And one thing, uh, well, the thing that he mentioned, of course, that basically he feels was like that oh, this is what set me off off, was like, he had this, he drew this picture of Jasmine, and, um, one second, let me, uh, pull up this, uh, little S pose right here, yeah, so he had a picture of Jasmine and Pocahontas smoking, uh, smoking hookahs, and, um, he said that he basically drew women because it was difficult for him to draw them growing up. Like, I guess, you know, he just couldn't draw women well, that kind of thing. I understand. I'm an artist. I've been drawing since, um, and, and, and 
it's funny because it's a lot of similarities between me and Marcus. And I did some studying on him to really uh, bring this perspective full circle. Um, But I guess he's been drawing since just about as little as he can remember. I've been drawing since about the age of four. I think he says like six or five. I don't know. It was some, you know, young number. And his inspirations was very similar to mine. A lot of anime, like Dragon Ball Z's and um, Tom and Jerry. And, 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 and he, a lot of his inspirations growing up kind of aligned with mine. But how this all even, the pot, the pot bubbled over with Uzumaki Gallery. Uzumaki Gallery was just now. If you if you don't know, you should check her out. Her art is really dope, and. Um, like it's 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 a vibe like no fun you can't she's a textile artist she does painting she she's 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 like and she you know i don't want to say she's well from underachievers she she be parlaying with the homie from underachievers ak and um just seeing them collab and do things together like uh, Uzumaki Gallery is really dope and if you don't know about it check her out it's Uzumaki like Naruto dot gallery and uh, she's verified she has a blue check let me tell you something I don't know if you know about the blue check on Instagram but uh it kind of means you're doing something I mean it means you're doing something I'm not downplaying it I'm I'm I don't mean to say it like that. It really means you're doing something. And, uh, of course, that doesn't go for every page with a blue check, right? But shouts out to Uzumaki Gallery for being verified. Because I was following her before she was verified. And I remember one day she had a blue check, and I was like, that's dope. Hope she gets everything she deserves. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, there are people who get victimized and probably cannot even speak up because their claims have to be pitted against the opinions and biases of the fandom that the person might be speaking out against and then maybe even in a legal situation that could get even more dicey with lack of evidence and I don't know you know but I'm gonna read this post that Uzumaki Gallery put up this is basically the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, In a tweet, she says, you sent me an unsolicited dick pic years ago when I asked you to draw me as Chun Li. Please don't ever write me ever again because I'm a dead ass and embarrass you. She's, She's not, I don't know who he thought she was, but in the next slide, she said, I express Marcus Prime sent me unsolicited dick pics and people I follow have the heart to retweet. She goes on to laugh. All of y'all getting unfollowed. Goodbye. In the caption, she says, Over 10 women have come forward to me via DM and comments. I am at a loss for words. Some women were sent pics. Others were molested. That's fucked up. We're talking about Marcus Prime right now. Like, bruh. That's fucked up. He is a menace to society. This is the first and last time I'm addressing this. If you follow Marcus Prime, I'm following me right now. I don't give a fuck if it was years ago. This man still wrote me after I have blocked his ass on mad accounts. If I unfollowed you, it's because you follow or support him. He dated my old homegirl. That's how we met. DM'd him to draw me as Chun-Li. He said, no problem gave him my number first text he sent was with his dick out and prisma colors laying around him bum buckler oh my gosh yo my g yo what the fuck is really going on right now 
what the fuck is really going on? There's nothing player about that, dog. There's nothing player about having your dick out surrounded by Prisma markers. Not at all. We don't co-sign that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the caption. I immediately blocked his number, but I had to see his ass around town. Shaking my fucking head. Fuck that shit. I'm overseeing on my timeline. He a whole ass pervert. The fact he wrote to me again. Like, hell no. I'm putting his ass on blast. Because he don't get it. I should have came out years ago, but I was scared because I didn't have a platform. But fuck that. I'm verified now too, bitch. You can't silence me. Y'all see what I said? And And... You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, when you when you when you have that power, you know, like, you you could really, could really take stands on fuck shit. Him writing, oh, this is me finishing. <clears throat> fuck that, I'm verified now too, bitch. You can't silence me. Him writing to me super triggered me, and the fact he don't care is crazy. And the fact people I thought were my friends don't care, it's crazy. This man acts like ally towards women don't believe it he tries to act like he's all about black women and look under my comments he manipulated and did the same shit to so many black women protect black women and fuck him fuck this is heavy i'm gonna read some of the comments as of right now there are a thousand and five comments This one was really uh, fucked up to read. This guy says, hi, y'all. I used to be Marcus' roommate in L.A. in K-Town in 2015. I was young, around 21, fresh. Never seen him do anything and don't care because I believe y'all. 100% as a survivor myself. I'm only on here asking. I'm only on here asking about a young woman or femme that came through one time. I could have swore I was younger than me, and I never said anything because I didn't want to assume and make an ass out of myself. But you, but if you were ever, but if you were ever to be that fucked up, if you, they kind of worded this, they typed this kind of uh, with typos, so I'm gonna re- read it correctly. I'm sure the way they meant. But if you were ever, but if you ever went to that fucked up house in K Town. And you were, in fact, close to underage, under 21 or not, and were drinking all that Hennessy. I saw y'all drinking, and if something happened that you didn't consent to, I would love to support you in any way to get justice. I never felt right about that, but didn't know you or who you were in context. Besides that, I believe all of you. Also, I'm sorry, but now that this is out, I wonder if my hunch was correct about what I was seeing. Who's in my gallery responds? This is crazy. If anyone knows info, please let him know. (sighs) Let me see here. This one girl says, uh, Floria Shelby. He is dead ass a fucking creep. Taking advantage of barely 18 year old ass girls asking for news for reference and offering no sort of compensation. He was incredibly predatory towards me four years ago when I was 18. Just DM'd you my testimony. But for people reading this, be careful. Be aware and know that people will support you if you choose to come forward about him or any other predator. Now, accusations are, of course, the accusations, and this is not me saying I don't believe anybody here. That's not me saying that at all. She said it. Be aware and know that people will support you if you choose to come forward about him or any other predator. When somebody's a predator and they've really done things, yeah, you're going to get that support if you come forward. So, don't be afraid. 
Who's in my gallery responds, love you, mama. Got your back. That's dope. <sighs> Let me see here. I'm going to probably read about two more of these comments. Um... Let me see here. I think this one is a um, it's a pretty good perspective, and it's funny because a lot of these are coming from women or femmes or hers or just allies or supporters in the movement. It's Tawny again. That's this person's Instagram. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. <laughs> The sickest thing about it is the facade of sexual awareness and respect. In his comics, he seems to attempt to represent emotional standpoint of women, and yet it has been reduced to our discontent with men not fulfilling us sexually, i.e. not receiving head and weak strokes. This is in reference to his recent works. Because, yeah, his old knob work, oh, gosh, it's just so low. Ah, the bar was so low, but beyond that it's yeah that's what that was in reference to the comment about the discontent with men not being fulfilled not fulfilling women sexually um that women have with men not fulfilling them sexually she goes on to say that facade is then used to get closer to women like if you can pick women's disgust from the point of view of women how could you then so easily be the cause of that and still be so unaware of that damage or harm inflicted? After inflicting these acts on multiple women without positive reception. <sighs> he was definitely aware of the harm he inflicted. The damage that was to come though. I don't think he saw all of that until it was, until the pop bubbled over. But he was very aware. Uzumaki Gallery responds, Girl, at the end of the day, he acted like an ally towards black women. And over 10 black women told me he's assaulted or sent dick pics unasked. So I have no time to sympathize with the serial sexual abuser. And that last sentiment, I um, I I I agree. I have no time to sympathize with the serial sexual abuser. Sexual abuse is serious. Abuse is serious. As sensitive as us, as sensitive as our society has become recently, and you know the word abuse might get thrown around more lightly than it needs to be. In this situation. This is very proper and right context. He is a serial sexual abuser, and the only reason he apologized was because he got caught. It's not like you did this to one or two women, women that you might have dated, and then, you know, like, realized you were a piece of shit and tried to right your wrongs. <laughs> it seems like you and Mr. Old and whatever other artist is on their way with clout to their head. And when I say artist, I mean illustrators and creators alike. It, it gets to your head and then you start thinking you can just do whatever you want. Motherfucker, you drew Spider-Man. And you, and you know what Uncle Ben said? With great power come great responsibility. And, like, I stood next to you, dog. And, like, for real, like, that shit is crazy that you, you was on this type of time. To go back to the post that Head Nerds in Charge posted. Um in the tweet 
Uzumaki Gallery says, You sent me unsolicited dick pic years ago when I asked you to draw me as Chun Li. Please don't ever write to me again because I'm a dead ass embarrass you. This is on her Instagram page as well. In this post as well, in the one with Head Nerds in Charge. And by the way, in the post, there's a picture of Marcus Prime with the shirt on that says End Rape Culture. An Instagram artist by the name of Artsy Black, who I would assume is a woman because the Instagram profile picture just it looks like one. Uh, black woman. She says, he mentioned several times that I was shaped beautifully. I just really thought he appreciated the black female form and he's an artist and all. See that? See that? She's a black woman. <laughs> oh, and I guess, I mean, that's her name too. Artsy and black. I totally just glossed over that. <clears throat> She goes on to say, but then he would say that he's horny, Bob McLeod, and send me pics of him jacking off or making his dick jump or shaking his butt. I don't even know him like that, and he doesn't know me, but we were casually sending each other nudes. But then he said he liked to be watched and wanted me to watch him jack off. I was always hesitant about it cuts off there pretty much I'm sure you can go to the uh, person's Instagram and read the rest of that statement uh, her name is artsy and black uh, it's spelled exactly how it sounds and I mean I guess people might think something else there's no underscores when I say it sounds exactly how it sounds phonetically when I say artsy and black it's I'm gonna only spell this once cause I'm not gonna spell every follower's name every uh every Instagram user's name but it's A-R-T-S-Y artsy and A-N-D black artsy and black and uh whew. Yeah, for what she just said, like, you remember what I said about old? There's weird people, and then there's fucking weirdos. And that's some weird old shit, bruh. Again, there's nothing player about what, what she said. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Shaking his butt? What, what are you, what? yo, dog. What? On camera? What? 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 So y'all go on. What the fuck? In the next slide, in Hide the Nerds in Charge, they say he issued an apology via social media. I'm gonna go on the social media page real quick because I think for when I, uh, I think for when I originally checked his Instagram. He, okay, so now his Instagram is private. <clears throat> he see, I also unfollowed him because he wasn't following me back. And he was just so prolific and famous that I could have just searched him if I felt like I didn't see his art in a while. I don't know Cyber Love personally, like I mentioned earlier. Like, I would do that with some money, but... um. With him, you know, I knew him personally. And now I can't even go look at the posts to go perhaps get some more context. And to just, again, bring this full circle for this man and the victims of the situation. But he has his account on private. And, uh... I would hit the follow button, but I'm not, I'm not a follower, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you see me bigging up your post and supporting you, like, you know, I guess there's some people that are just so big, they just can't afford to follow back, which I get. I ain't taking all of that personal. It's just social media. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, I knew you in person. I was showing you love. I followed you through all the accounts that got banned. He talks about it in 
an interview or two how he had multiple Instagram accounts because they kept banning him because guess what? He kept drawing sexual art, which of course you would have thought was for the empowerment of women. But under the circumstances now, it kind of has like a... This is kind of different looking at all of his art now, you know? And the place that it might have actually came from. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go to the head nerds in charge and just read the apology that he uh, issued. <sighs> Let's see here. His apology. Marcus Palm says, This post is to apologize to Uzumaki Gallery a few years back. I sent her unsolicited dick pics. I'm not sure what was going through my head, but I'm deeply, truly sorry. We know what was going through your head, but it really wasn't going through your head. It was going through your dick. You wasn't thinking with your head, but you was... <laughs> You know, you, you sit here and, and draw chakras and and you sit and operating at the lowest one, dog. Like, <laughs> he goes on to say, it is inexcusable and perverse behavior. That kind of goes without saying. And I have done it more than once to other women. None of them deserved any of it. No one does. On this subject, I would like to address my urges. I have given in to my sexual desires and pursued women and made some uncomfortable. Yeah, some might be an understatement, bro. This behavior is not okay. I care strongly about women and can no longer continue with this behavior as women have been my biggest support system. Yeah, they've been your biggest support system because that's been the that's been your content so women supporting you it's there's bias in it they see themselves in your work there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that at all but your support system the bias that they see themselves in for what that's built on was apparently on very 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 devious and perverse behaviors disgusting and look he says I am aware most will be oh I'm oh, sorry well he says I am aware most will be disappointed in me Again, like these are the responses of a person who has been caught. Were you sorry when you sent it the first time? Or the fifth time? Or the sixth time? When were you sorry? I guess you're sorry when somebody with a blue check puts you on blast. I am aware most will be disappointed and even feel betrayed. I don't think anything I say can convince you that my intentions to push for representation and equality for black women in the arts entertainment field is pure. Now, Marcus, ooh, Marcus, I'm going to, uh, this might be the only thing I'm saying um <sighs> this might be the only thing I'm saying in your defense. <sighs> I'm gonna read this statement again from his apology. I don't think anything I say can convince you that my intentions to push for representation and equality for black women in the arts entertainment field is pure. (laughs) 
I'm going to tell you personally, Marcus, because I know you. And maybe others feel this way, too. I don't know, but... I think you're... I'm going to say this. Practice what you preach. In what you said, no, there is nothing you can convince me that your intentions for what you were doing are pure because your intention showed. If I had to defend that statement, I would replace the word intentions with the message. That's the defense. So I'm going to reread that part of your apology with that rewording because that I do I see it I've, I've seen it I saw it when I was studying to make sure that what I was saying was coming from a correct and as unbiased place as possible I don't think anything I say can convince you that my message to push for representation and equality for black women in the arts and field is pure. In saying that, your message was pure. Your message is pure. We got the message. Did you? The message is going to live on and gain stronger traction. Just as you perhaps didn't start it, you won't finish it either. And for those you inspired, for all those you inspired in the time that you did, I do applaud you. But I'll leave it at that because this isn't you deserve that much if anything at all I can't say that's up to the people you victimize to perhaps And the people you feel you betrayed or feel betrayed, you know, that's that's just up to everybody else to reconcile. At what point do they feel that you may really deserve forgiveness? That's not up to me. And for my applause earlier, In some way, maybe. (laughs) I guess I just don't want to see you die. This feels like the kind of thing that drives a man to suicide. I don't know, but... You have to deal with what you did while you're here and make amends and turn from your ways. He goes on in his apology to say, I am truly sorry. I would also like to apologize to my family. I pray that I have not shamed you. You shamed yourself. And yes, you did shame your family as well. Because they didn't raise you like that. I am in tears for not addressing these demons sooner, knowing I would have to face them. I'm so sorry. 
And I guess I chuckled because she, this demon was, <laughs> no, this demon was a Jin Cherokee who got a gallery. <laughs> you dig? Her name ain't Valerie. <laughs> Shouts out to Uzumaki. She really, I, I love that, honestly. Like, come on, dude. You really, you really fucked up, dog. To all the women who believed and supported me, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never meant to hurt anyone. This reminds me of something my dad said, but, you know, some people just say sorry to make you feel better. And I'm not saying he's not genuinely sorry, but in this case, yeah. Again, you weren't sorry after the sixth dick pic, bro? The seventh dick pic? The, 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 the... The tenth girl who messaged you, she not fucking with you. Like what? Well, the 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 thirteenth girl who said she not feeling you. Like what? Like when were you actually sorry? He says I promise to pursue counsel therapy to address my addiction behavior. I couldn't even face my family yet. Please give me time. I understand if you choose to unfollow me, cut ties, and support. I take full accountability as a man for my actions and pray in time you all can forgive me as I grow as a man. Thank you, Marcus Prime. In the next slide, however, the head nerds in charge says, but people didn't accept it because the issues were deeper than an isolated incident. And even in what I just said earlier about you know, some of that one redeeming quality or rewording to his apology. I didn't see this third slide yet, so... Again, this thing is... It's, it's, it's layered. There's artists out here really... Like, doing that to women. And it's fucked up. It's really fucked up. Like, how, like here's a tweet from Violets on Pluto. He also prey on smaller artists. One of my friends would like to stay anonymous, but Marcus Prime has coerced them into sending nudes under the guise that he would share their art for exposure. It's serious how he's out here preying on people and sexually harassing online. Wizard Monkey Gallery replies, I heard you just apologized to me and I'm not having it. I don't give a fuck. You know how much pain I had to endure seeing his ass around? And the fact he wrote to me like everything is okay? Fuck him forever. Like, bro, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, your card is pulled. First of all, your Brooklyn card is pulled. You, you definitely not jacking that anymore. Like, you really just kept mashing the gas, and now you... That's how you crash. For a little bit, he kind of, I think, deactivated his account. This was when it was still public, but then I just kind of, like, faded off of it so I can kind of just do some studying for this uh, episode. And, like, I went to go look back at it, and it's private. And I don't feel like following because, I mean, personally, his art wasn't the greatest anyway. But I was supporting the work and the message. And it kind of seems the messenger has... Um... Yeah, the messenger has uh, just (laughs) fucked up big time. Nobody gives a shit about the messenger anymore, so... I mean... (laughs) He wasn't following me anyway, and, uh, (laughs) yeah, I mean, yeah, I said I know him, but it was, like, the kind of know him that felt shallow when you meet that kind of person, where it's, like, 
again, I thought he was from Brooklyn originally, so I thought, you know, we could have, like, kicked it off on that note, but he was already a hard person to get to, and he had clout. And he, you know, just, yeah, let that shit go to his head, and it's like he's an example of what not to be. Uh, I had to start up another, like, separate segment, because in talking, I didn't even see, like, an hour actually lapsed, so... I'm pretty much gonna wrap it up around here, but to all the victims, um, my heart really goes out to you. On behalf of the art community and black men everywhere, you know, the ones who stand up for women and actually ally towards women and care about the state of women. We are sorry that you had to deal with somebody like that who misrepresented us. I love women. I love feminine energy. I have drawn more women in my recent work because for original motivations like Marcus, I wanted to get better at drawing women too. And I did. And while I've drawn naked women here and there, which, by the way, I'm a tattoo artist. A tattoo artist who has to be in body parts and very intimate settings with clientele, which takes a very high level of respect and trust. <laughs> Even if I wasn't a tattoo artist, just as a person, I have to show that decency. to my art. I draw teenage looking characters. I don't feel like drawing them naked. (laughs) You know? And I think your art says a lot about you. The work speaks for itself. And while your work may have came from some pure places, oh no, might be, well, it is one of, or perhaps your most recent amalgamation of your latest work. Well, let me rephrase that. While it may be one of your latest, or is your latest work, in terms of a series, It seems to be an amalgamation of some of the hidden agendas and feelings and situations that you might have encountered played out in a sugared down re-narrated comic way. And it's misleading. And that's terrible to do. That victims can go on your page. And see examples of your work. And. See what you've done. And. See connections between that. The lines are blurred. For as pure intentions as you might have had, perhaps now no one can tell in what peace those intentions are pure. 
You've drawn so many naked women. <laughs> it's really all you do. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. I say if a man can control himself. It's a very important thing. If you're going to draw naked women all day, you need to spend the time to have the mental stability and control to have yourself aligned and not to be in your dick. Fucked up. He says, here's here's one quote. He says he tries to be sober when he does his work because he doesn't like the idea that all artists have to do shrooms or smoke to do a dope piece. And I saved that quote from one of the interviews he did because sober doesn't mean, oh, you smoked or, I mean, you know, sober doesn't necessarily just mean you didn't smoke or you didn't drink. It's being sober in the mind. Not being clouded. Because while you say that, while you may have not smoked and drank as much as your colleagues, it seems you are furthest from sober in your own mind. And you got a dose of reality and definitely sobered up quick. I smoke all the time. And it helps me. I try to be sober when I do my work. And the weed helps me. Because my thoughts are clouded. And I know what I need to do to silence them. So I can continue my work. There are a handful of bad men doing bad things, affecting all men and women, while the majority, vast majority, the big number of good men go unmentioned because of the deeds of bad men. So Mr. Ode and Marcus Prime, you are just two people who at the core of things have not even phased the movement and will do fine without you. Again, not just, again, Mr. O wasn't even really a part of a movement. He was really just a, a IG artist who got clout from <laughs> some drawn women. <laughs> That's the thing. Marcus Prime was a king who fell. Uh, and Mr. Ode was just a peasant with a pen. <laughs> Both tragic stories, nonetheless. Both pieces of shit. So, I think I'm going to wrap it up on that note. If you made it this far, I want to thank you for listening to the victims. My heart really does go out to you. I hope you do heal from this situation. I hope you don't have to deal with more situations like this ever again. Um, to the artists out there who might have also looked up to Marcus I'm not here this isn't me canceling him because like as you said earlier that's up to the people and the people have spoken to the other artists out there 
because I did see one or a couple comments like, oh, you know, he's giving artists a bad name. He's giving black men a bad name. You know who he's giving a bad name? These fucking weirdos. (laughs) And that's good because they need a bad name. They need to be exposed. Now when women see this creep ass behavior, they can see the signs now. Why is this guy asking me for less than dress clothing reference? Why is this guy even asking me for reference? Why can't he just Google it? I have pictures on my IG. Why is this guy acting like a fucking weirdo? You guys have definitely made it obvious what what it's like to be a weirdo. You guys were the fucking weirdos in school who got tattoos... I don't know, started getting better, got more clout, and just couldn't control yourselves in that process. Ridiculous. No man is perfect. But for what you guys did, shame on you. I think, yeah, that's probably my final thoughts on this situation. He's not giving me a bad name because I do good things. He's not giving me a bad name as an artist or a black man. So, those are just two people. They've done a lot that can't be ignored, even if they are just two people. And I'm sure there's more like them who are less famous with less clout. And if you're one of those weirdos listening, then cut that shit out. Dig. So, until the next episode, thanks for listening. I hope I did some justice to the people this was meant to do justice for. Best bless y'all.